Here's a complete breakdown of this VFX shot using the virtual production iPhone app Jet Set, Blender, and After Effects. This shot has a handoff of bolts between a CG character and an actor. Our actor needs to be sitting high on something so he can see their legs swinging. And I want to have a real camera move with all of that parallaxing instead of just shooting a flat plate on a green screen and then doing the camera move in Blender. A lot of you had questions about the nitty gritty specifics about using Jet Set. So in this video, we're gonna do a deep dive into one shot from start to finish so you can see how Jet Set and AutoShot are used along the way. This is the third part of a six part series sponsored by Lightcraft who created Jet Set. They've been incredible in making this series possible. Six episodes of a spin-off series from my friends of Sophia universe and six YouTube videos like this one. They haven't asked me to say anything specific in these videos, so you're getting the opinion of a director, writer, and VFX artist who's using these tools to tell sci-fi stories and incorporating all this technology into an independent workflow. So to start, let's take a look at the full third episode of Friends of Sophia Tidbits and Bites, and then we're gonna do a deep dive into the last shot. When you live and work in a company tower, the future is in your mind. Don't slow down! You can rest at the top! This isn't worth it. This can't be worth it. Back. The sickness is spreading in this town. A cancerous growth of a technological conversion that has taken root and developed in us. We must crush it. She's probably a closeted robosexual. They always are. This better be worth it. Some bolts we can throw. If they hit someone, it'll hurt, but it won't, like, kill them. I've checked. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? This was so worth it. This was one of the first images that I imagined when writing these six episodes. These two characters sitting with their legs swinging, looking down at this massive indoor city below them. I start in Blender with a rough previs version of every shot to figure out composition and camera movement and things like that. Then I edit it together with scratch dialogue from the script. As you probably know, you might think you need this much of a shot, but when you see it in the edit, you actually only need a sliver of it. So this is a way to kind of gauge how long I needed this shot to be. I'm gonna bring the 3D scene into Jet Set so that I can view it in real time on my phone, roll takes, and explore the scene. To do that, I'm gonna export my 3D scene as a USD file. The key is to keep these files small. 
so I get rid of a lot of the props and other details. And I also use a decimate modifier to reduce the geometry of bytes and any photogrammetry assets that have a lot of polygons. One thing that you want to keep in mind is that the scene needs to be scaled accurately. So you can use the measure tool in Blender just to make sure that everything is correct. You can also add empties to your scene with a scene lock underscore prefix to set up different places where you want your origin point to be. Now it's time to open AutoShot and go to the Models tab. From here, navigate to the folder where you exported your USD file. AutoShot will convert it into a USDZ file, which is a zipped version that includes materials. But you can also do two things here. One is limit the size of textures, again, to keep files small. And the other is adding an audio file. I have audio synced up to my animation with Bytes' lines, so BJ, who plays Tidbits, reacts to the lines coming from the phone. Why are you looking at me like that? Navigate to where you want to save the USDZ file and choose Make USDZ. Then if you have Jet Set open on your phone, you can push it directly to the app. Otherwise, you'll drop it in a folder on iCloud, which Jet Set creates. Drop it into the Models folder. Inside Jet Set, you have your scene there. Hitting play will start any animation and audio you have. I'm using the Cine version of Jet Set, so I'm going to be using the footage from a Blackmagic camera. So you're going to need an Axon Simo to run a feed from your cinema camera via HDMI into the Jet Set app. From there, you can choose Lens Calibration, and you'll take a bunch of reference frames to calibrate the offset between your iPhone camera and your cinema camera. Then there's a red box showing you which part of the frame the cinema camera is seeing. You'll need to run the actual calibration via AutoShot, so you're going to need a computer and Wi-Fi on set. AutoShot connects to your iPhone via IP address. In the Calibration tab of AutoShot, you can run the calibration of as many lenses as you have. You'll just need to know the sensor width of your camera. Once those calibrations are run, it gets pushed back to the JetSet app and that box turns yellow. Now, all the tracking data from the phone will be offset to match your cinema camera perfectly. After rolling your camera, you roll the JetSet app and record the flashing slate on a monitor or iPad. To get this elevated shot, we rigged up a scaffolding plank for our actor. We had the camera on a gimbal on a jib. Using the Raven Eye system, I was able to control the pan and tilt of the camera from a tripod while Pat operated the jib arm. And I could see the feed from the camera and from Jet Set. Our costume designer Kevin wore a green glove to hand off the bolts. There's a bit of choreography between the jib, the camera move, and the handoff. But because I could see everything in Jet Set, I knew when we had it because I could see it right there. Cut. Got it. When you're done with your production day, you open AutoShot and sync all of your takes from your phone onto your computer or a hard drive, wherever you're choosing to save it. And then you're ready for post. The first step in the post process is editing. All the takes are recorded from the iPhone's cameras, so I use these to get a first cut together. I sync them up with the cinema footage and the sound, so I know which clips go with which takes. These Jet Set clips work great when there's one actor in front of a green screen, but because we could see the scaffolding and some crew members, I needed to run it through AutoShot to get a proper feel for what the shot was going to look like. To do that, go to the Takes tab in AutoShot. Point to where your cinema footage is saved, make proxies, and point to the proxy folder as well. And all of our options here are to tell AutoShot, here's the take I want to use, here's the clip from the cinema camera, here's the Blender project I want you to open, and the camera is in reference to this scene locator. And also, here are the frames from the shot I want to use, which you'll know because you've already done an edit. And by the way, those frames are in reference to the cinema footage, not the jet set clip. You can also run an AI mat as well. These are listed from fastest and least accurate to longest and most accurate. I think Inspirenet you had to get from GitHub or something and install it. That one works really well. It's kind of comparable to After Effects Rotobrush. And from there, AutoShot lives up to its name and does the rest. AutoShot will open a Blender project of your scene with a camera matching your cinema camera perfectly and a plane with your footage on it in its proper location in the scene with an AI mat or chroma key node. The footage is transcoded into an EXR sequence in the ACES color space. Everything is parented to an empty, so you can do any tweaking you need to position and rotation, or if you just want to move your character somewhere else in the scene entirely, you can do that. I use After Effects for keying, so I take the footage, add color space transforms in DaVinci, isolate the green with a color picker or a magic mask, and boost the green in the green screen. I also denoise the footage, which is crucial for a clean key. 
In After Effects, I use Key Light and Mocha Pro if I need to do any roto work. And occasionally I use Roto Brush as well, depending on the complexity of what I need. In this case, I wasn't sure if I was gonna include the scaffolding in the shot or not, but I opted to rotoscope it out. In the Blender project, I swap out the EXR sequence with this keyed footage. Depending on the frames you chose when running Auto Shot, there might be a little bit of a discrepancy here, uh, either because maybe like when I run Auto Shot, I add a little bit of buffer versus like the sh just the frames of the shot that I need when I'm keying and doing the um, rotoscoping and stuff like that. So I use a combined shader node and adjust the offset until it lines up perfectly. To animate bytes, I use iClone by Reillusion. I can combine Mixamo animations with Reillusion packs and also keyframe the animation in layers. So animating just the head or torso or arm on its own to keep it all separated. By dragging the shot itself into iClone, I can line up the position of Bytes' hand as best I can. I export an FBX file at 24 frames per second and import that into Blender. In Blender, go to the Dope Sheet, Action Editor, and name this animation. Then I can append a rig of Bytes with proper materials and piston rigging for his head. Then you just assign the animation you just named and we have an animated bot. Now in Blender, it's time to swap out all this temporary stuff for better looking models. I pull together elements from kits, from add-ons, and create custom elements like this walkway from an image texture. The company tower where they live is an indoor city, so I wanted to see the roof. I created this element using array modifiers and a curve modifier. And now it's time to render everything out. I render out multi-layer EXR sequences so I can get mist, glossy direct, emission, and ambient occlusion passes all in one go. But here's the secret sauce to your render. Create a new view layer in Blender. And here you can toggle which collections show up in that render. So I can duplicate bytes and relight him entirely without being affected by the ambient light. And I can also do a pass that has my footage isolated. Each view layer also renders out all of the passes. So you end up with an EXR image sequence that has a ton of data, but you're only rendering it out one time instead of having to do multiple passes. Of course, it takes a little bit more time to render it out when you do it this way. It still saves time compared to rendering each one of these passes out one by one. Then in After Effects, I have all these options all in one EXR sequence. You have to add two effects to your EXR sequence to make it viewable in After Effects. One is Extractor, which has a dropdown so you can choose which of your render passes you want to see, and a Color Profile Converter set to Linearize. Compositing is where your renders come alive and where this shot starts looking like something from the Friends of Sophia world. I like to render out a frame or two from Blender, bring it into After Effects, and composite it together. That way I can see what it'll really look like, and I can make adjustments in my Blender project if needed. Then I render it all out and swap the image for the image sequence, and it'll be good to go. In this shot, I also added the bolts in After Effects, which is just a solid with a bevel effect on it. And then all you have to do is repeat this process for every shot in the episode. Whew, it's a lot of work, yes, but I find that Jet Set lets me focus on the creative part of that work while automating the stuff like getting everything up to like a first draft level. It's almost like having a VFX assistant that's getting the shot on its legs so that you can take it from there. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, especially if you have more questions about using Jet Set or AutoShot. There are more episodes like this on the way. If you wanna try the Jet Set app for free, you can get it from the Apple Store and get the AutoShot app from Lightcraft's website. Check it out and start bringing your films to life.